As Jamila says, I'm Alex Pleasance, Head of Government Relations at Tech Nation with a growth platform for UK founders and scaling tech companies. And at Tech Nation, harnessing the power of UK tech to reduce our carbon footprint is one of our core missions. Last year, we launched our first ever net zero program. And that's specifically for the, the growth of climate tech companies that are changing the way and changing the way we think about the, the planet. And this year, we're thrilled to be working with Bulb and a group of other high growth British firms on Tech Zero, which you'll hear more about in just a moment. So in our role as the Network for UK Scale-Ups, we want to ensure that all UK tech companies have access to the necessary expertise and knowledge and also to provide a digital home for this initiative. And in a year when the spotlight is on the UK for G7 and COP26, I think we've got a really unique opportunity to lay down a market as the home of the most kind of innovative solutions to the world's most critical problem. And I'm fortunate today to be joined by three people from three of the most innovative companies in the UK. So if I could now maybe give you a quick 30 second intro each and then we'll dive into the question. So Emma, if you want to just introduce yourself, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Hi, everybody. And thanks, Alex, for that brilliant intro. I'm Emma Young. I'm the VP of Global Comms for Bulb. We're a green energy company, um, the fastest growing company in Europe, I think. Um, We've we've just been crowned, um, so so really uh, working on lots of really exciting things. Um, and I think the most exciting of of all of those at the moment is, of course, the Tech Zero Task Force. Um, and and I'll stop there because I think there's lots more to say about that, um, and I'll save that for later on. Fabulous, thanks, Emma. Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel Carolan. I'm the general counsel of, of What Three Words. If you haven't heard of us, we've uh, divided the world up into 57 trillion squares, given every single one of them a unique three word address. Um, and we are scaling that up across uh, various different industries. So um, work with the UK emergency services, uh, various global uh, navigation companies, as well as uh, a number of car companies uh, such as Daimler. Fabulous. And finally, Catherine. Hi, uh, so I'm the CFO at Go Cardless. So we're a, a payments business focusing on account to account, i.e. using bank accounts to pay each other. So uh, mostly um, started in the UK, uh, but we also have now have about a 25% international business across uh, US, Europe and uh, Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and I was also asked by Hiroki, who's our CEO and founder, to take on responsibility for sustainability uh, at Go Cardless. Uh, so I've been learning a lot and very excited to uh, participate in what Bulb is leading uh, with Tech Zero and also to help to drive change um, as you know, both in Go Catalyst but also, but also across the wider industry. Amazing, thank you, Catherine. So let's dive kind of straight into it then. Um, I think it'd be good to know more about the Tech Zero Task Force, what it is, what it's hoping to achieve. Emma, I don't know if you want to jump in on that one. Yeah, yeah, of course, really happy to give a, a quick overview of it. So we started thinking about this, I think, towards the back end of, of last year. We'd been thinking at Bulb for a little while about what our net zero plan should look like and what we could start doing to, um, to really think about sustainability in every bit of our business. It's obviously really core to our mission, which is to lower bills and lower, and lower carbon emissions um, for all of our members. Um, but we wanted to take that one step further. So we started thinking about it at the end of... Um, um, end of last year, then started talking to um, other high growth uh, tech companies in the UK um, and pulled the, the task force together, um, obviously working with, with you guys at Tech Nation as well. So um, got 15 uh, of the fastest growing companies in the UK together at the beginning of this year, which feels like a million years ago now and also probably about two minutes ago. Um, and we all started talking about how we could uh, work together to um, share resources, share information um, and, and help each other. We realized that obviously it's something that we've all been thinking about separately you know we've all been looking at our net zero plans and at what we want to to do um all been really focused on our sustainability efforts um but realized that it would be much quicker and much easier uh, for us all to work together on this and then beyond those 15 companies perhaps we could also help other companies um particularly in the tech sector or companies using technology um and help them uh, in their uh, efforts to get to net zero as well Fabulous. So obviously we hear quite a lot about corporate net zero targets, both within tech and across sectors. What's different about this one? What do you think is unique about tech zero? Yeah, that's a really good question because it's definitely um, 
uh, it's definitely a hot topic at the moment and lots of different companies obviously in lots of different industries are thinking about um, net zero at the moment which I think is only a good thing actually it's great that um, everybody's really focused on this particularly with the UK um, hosting COP this year it's obviously a, a great time to um, really focus minds within companies and also um, amongst consumers as well I think the thing that's really well there's a few things that are really different about tech zero I think one is like I said that um, that we're really trying to be to be helpful so working together to to try and provide really practical solutions so um, uh, there's a website which um, Tech Nation you're very kindly hosting um, so if you you search for Tech Zero Task Force you can take a look at the website it has a really clear set of commitments so it's very easy to work out how you should start thinking about this stuff um, so measuring your scope one to three emissions through to creating your your net zero plan and having an exec sponsor all that sort of stuff that's really really important there's also then a toolkit um, which again is designed to be really practical really simple and really helpful so um, making uh, climate jargon um, easy to understand so there's lots of climate jargon around um, and that can be a stumbling block um, and also providing case studies and um, again really useful resources so links to um, to agencies consultancies that can help you measure your um, measure your emissions um, and start thinking about your net zero plan as well so I think it's that sort of um, that sense of community so all working together on this stuff that feels really different to me um, it's a really practical uh, nature of it so um, having access to these resources online which are available to anybody who wants to to join um, Tech Zero not just to those 15 companies um, and thank you for I've just seen uh, Timila you posted the link which is brilliant um, so yeah anybody is welcome to take a look at that and we would we would love to be able to help and then the third bit I think is the um, the government uh, involvement as well. So we've been really fortunate that um, Tech Nation has been hugely supportive and really um, actively involved in this. Um, we've also had a huge amount of support from Andrew Griffith, who's the government's net zero uh, business champion, um, which is absolutely invaluable, um, and DCMS as well. So we did the kind of big launch of Tech Zero a couple of weeks ago, and the Secretary of State um, opened that and, and uh, opened COGEX, uh, a big tech conference, to um, to celebrate that and. Um, um, and helped us launch the, the task force as well. So I think that's been that's been really helpful and will continue to be really helpful as we um, uh, support other companies to to work on this net zero plan and, and their sustainability efforts. Definitely, no, I think that's, I think that's key. And I th I'm keen to get a sense from each of you how you're going about this. I think it'd be really useful for the tech companies and for the founders here today to get a sense of the journey that you have all gone on collectively towards net zero. So Rachel, I didn't know if you wanted to kind of jump in and tell us a bit more about how what three words is progressing in measuring emissions and how they're setting net zero target and how they've gone about that process. Absolutely. Um, so we obviously um, discussed um, setting a net zero target and what that would be as our, our initial step um, as a management team. Um, and we've set our target at reaching net zero by 2030. Uh, the reason being we wanted it to be very ambitious, but also within a reasonable gra grasp if we sort of put time, effort, resources into this. Um, in terms of our progress with that, I mean, obviously the first step was getting management and board approval. And then from there, um, we've really scaled up a team of, of champions within the business um, to work on this. So representatives from pretty much every department within the company. Um, and I think that helps keep people on track. It shares information across the company, but also frankly, I'm not sure you can really combat this as sort of a one or two man band inside the company. It really needs to be sort of champions from each department that will move you forward. Um, in terms of our progress, we've we've successfully measured our scope one to three emissions for 2020. Um, it's likely we'll do that at least on an annual basis, um, potentially even quarterly. Um, and we're currently now uh, just deciding where we will spend uh, resources in terms of, you know, maybe switching suppliers, reducing emissions directly, taking less business flights, but equally looking into purchasing uh, things like carbon removal credits um, to, to, to make real progress uh, to reach that target. Brilliant. And uh, Catherine, you spoke earlier about how your CEO assigned you as the person responsible for sustainability in the business. I just wanted to kind of touch on that a bit. How important is it to have the CEO buy-in and how important is it to have somebody that, that this falls with and the responsibility sits with? 
Yeah, so I think one of the reasons why Hiroki uh, decided that we should definitely give to one of the exec members to be uh, ultimately driving this and responsible for it was so that it had the you know the appropriate profile in the con in the company, and also obviously as a CFO, I kind of hold uh, the purse strings so to speak, uh, and therefore where we spend money or don't spend money and have you know a, quite a big influence on that. Um, and so I think we as an exec team decided that it was most appropriate it actually sat with finance because. I was, you know, I'm able to kind of sort of allow us to spend slightly more if that's going to achieve, help us to achieve uh, our net zero targets quicker. Um, and also one of the things we've done as well, uh, very much to what Rachel was saying, is we have uh, employed a sustain sustainability lead uh, who starts at the end of the month. Uh, and he's going to have the responsibility to drive this in a cross-functional way um, throughout the company. But because he reports direct to me, that obviously gives him a certain, because we're now around um, sort of 600 people. Uh, so, we, you know, we're quite getting a very big and growing organisation. Now we're getting a lot bigger and growing. And so we wanted to make sure that whoever was given um, this as a project really felt they got the exec team by. And I think it's so important mm -hmm. because you've ultimately got to align the business objectives alongside sustainability. Uh, I personally definitely believe this is possible. Uh, but, you, you know, I think the only way you do it is if it's a seat at the top table, so to speak, that can both actively talk to the board and the rest of the exec team about why this is so important. Yeah, definitely. And uh, sort of linked to that, then in terms of getting employees on board, how important is that and how, how have GoCard has gone about doing that? Yeah, so it's really interesting, actually, because, um, you know, I think we have quite a young uh, workforce, generally speaking. Um, and quite a diverse one. And I think that probably all ties to a lot of also interest in, in sustainability generally. Uh, and the response has been absolutely amazing. You know, we set up a Slack channel uh, purely for anybody who was willing to volunteer for the kind of cross-functional uh, team that we're putting together uh, once my uh, sustainability manager starts. And um, we've had so many people from across the business, you know, be really up for doing this on, on a volunteer basis and, and lots of great ideas kind of flying around. Um, so, you know, I think it's just, um, you know, it sort of getting that employee engagement, I think has actually been, been fairly easy. I do think we may start to hit more challenging situations when it comes to actually making decisive change. So, for example, if we're asking, you know, somebody to move supplier because, you know, they have a preferred mm. choice, but we're saying kind of no, because they don't have their own, you know, we're not very happy with the way that they're approaching sustainability, et cetera. Um, I think that that's when we potentially will come into some tensions uh, and obviously we need to manage our way through that. But I think at the end of the day, you know, the, the only successful businesses in 10 years will have addressed sustainability for sure. So you've kind of got to do it, uh, even if there are some slightly more painful steps that you've got to take on the way. Definitely. I think it's increasingly becoming so central to the business models of all companies. And, and I guess another point then, I don't know who wants to jump in on this one, is how can a tech company if I'm starting a tech company today, how can I manage growing fast while also reducing my emissions? I don't know if Emma or Rachel or someone wants to jump in on that one. Yeah, I can jump in on this one. I'm going to totally um, plagiarise uh, Tessa Clark, who's one of the CEOs um, involved in the task force. So she heads up um, Olio, and um, she was talking about this the other day. And I think um, I thought made a really great point around how a few years ago um, companies would talk about, you know, how can you scale really quickly? How can you grow really fast? But also make sure you're really taking care of the employee experience and making sure that employees have a, you know, have a really good time and don't feel burnt out by these high growth companies and are, are being really looked after um she says that you know nowadays obviously you'd never think about like that being a trade-off of course you know being a high growth successful company um you need to ensure that your your employees are really happy and that they're having a really fantastic experience we wouldn't even you know we wouldn't question that now and i think the same has to be true for um for sustainability right like it's it's not an either or um it really is you know if you want to be a if you want to be a successful business just as Catherine was saying in in future you know the successful businesses will be the ones that prioritize sustainability so i think it's um it's really important to see that the the two actually go hand in hand and that's right from you know employees or potential employees applying to join your company because they really care about the mission they really care about what you're doing um and will ask questions about your your sustainability efforts um right through to you know the the board and um and your your execs and and how they're prioritizing it as well so um yeah i, I don't see the two as mutually exclusive i think um the two really work together that's not to say that it's um that it's easy by any means but i think it's it's absolutely critical and actually the one um the one helps the other and will continue to do that in future 
Amazing. And Rachel, I don't know if you want to kind of touch on that too a little, just to give a sense of how core sustainability is to what, what Free Words is doing and, and how you kind of couple a really fast growing global business and with this amazing international reach as and keeping sustainability at its core. I don't know if you want to kind of support some of that. Absolutely. So um, really just to echo what, what Emma said. So I think um, they can go hand in hand, um, fast growth, but also looking at sustainability. So, I mean, if you're looking into really vetting your suppliers, etc., I mean, it's likely you're going to be able to squeeze out potentially greater operational efficiency if you're really doing a deep dive into who your suppliers are and how they operate, what you're spending, where your spend goes, etc., which is obviously part and parcel. Of, of getting to net zero and, and progressing against your, your your targets. But obviously alongside that as well, you know, we found at What Three Words that just due to our, our mission, which is um, you know, in in part to to make the world an, an easier place to to navigate, which which has a lot of knock on benefits. So for example, our work with emergency services um we're we're humbled to see sort of daily stories of, of how our tech is is used for good. Um, and I think employees are just going to care more about these greater purposes now. So sustainability obviously being number one, and that's going to help you attract much greater talent than perhaps you otherwise would, but also retain that talent as well. So um, that's that's definitely something we've seen at, at What Three Words and, and continue to do so. Amazing. Yeah, I think it's, it's so key, isn't it, that the, these companies, that all the the companies that we work with in, in Tech Zero are doing such important transformative work in their own sector. And it's just kind of how we channel that sort of same innovative thinking to a, a challenge like this. Um, Catherine, uh, when it comes to fintechs, what do you think fintech companies and, can teach the big banks about reaching Net Zero? Yeah, so I, I personally feel that, you know, fintechs have got a huge part to play, um, you know, and also sort of neobanks I mean, the same, in the same world. In, the way that we help um, the, you know, the sort of economy at a wider sense uh, move towards a sustainable future. Uh, and you know, what, some of the things I've been definitely thinking about that I'm hoping we can uh, sort of start upon an initiative on is, is basically either offering preferential, preferential rates to uh, businesses that have got uh, to help them make payments in a cheaper way because they've got their own sustainable agenda and showing that we help to power green finance um, and really think about you know, where you know, anybody that's really driving kind of investment in green uh, businesses because um, you know clearly when you there's a lot lot sort of a lot of research out there I recently did a, a course with Cambridge to um, get my own learning up on on sustainability and all honesty because if you'd have asked me uh, before Christmas if what scopes one two and three were I honestly would not have been able to give the answer thankfully I can now uh, so I took it upon myself to do this course and it was really interesting actually when you start to get into the finance world you know because we are ultimately finance is the core of what everybody does you know, if you run a business, you've got to pay people, uh, you know, people need bank accounts, etc. So we have to enable that in a very green way and making sure that that sort of financing is available, because a lot of what needs to be done uh, from a sustainability perspective is very long term. So you're not necessarily going to get a return immediately if you're trying to tra transform an, an industry away from what was very carbon intensive to something that's not. Um, and so I think we have got to be part of that ecosystem that ultimately backs and helps to drive and you know maybe be willing to take a little bit more risk in these areas you know we're allowing people to you know process payments through us that we might have otherwise considered potentially not to be so attractive etc uh, and that is where i see you know the, the sort of finance world playing a really core cool part uh, you know, clearly when you're your business like and i think this applies to most technology businesses you know we're not starting from a position that say um you know big banks are going to do with, with probably very big carbon footprints of their own but you've also got to really think about all the merchants that you serve. You know, I, I know that's something we're going to take very seriously is also thinking about, you know, have we got any merchants here who are definitely not, you know, sort of driving the sustainability agenda, you know, perhaps doing the converse to it. And are we happy to continue to serve them and kind of pushing not so really, really um, kind of important that we help to drive that. Um, but, you know, it's just got to happen. I mean, that there's no way anybody starts to look into this and you can't see that there's got to be change. Uh, and I think we'll all end up in a much sort of better place by taking, you know, slightly uh, less sort of profit orientated mode. You know, it's not you clearly got to still be able to do business in a profitable way. But there's also clearly a cost to making businesses more sustainable. And, and we at GoCalis are very much looking forward to help not only ourselves, but other businesses to achieve that. Brilliant. I think I think the part you said about the learning experience, obviously, all the companies that are involved in this and me included, it's been such an 
experience learning what is scope one two and three what exactly is net zero and and all these other kind of buzzwords and whatnot i don't know if emma you want to kind of talk about how we've worked together to kind of what the what the benefit is of joining tech zero is in terms of learning and in terms of going on this journey collectively yeah i mean i think there's like you say, there's there's so much to it. Um, it's something that, as Catherine says, we all need to do. It's something we've all been thinking about. You know, how do we create our net zero plans? Where where should we start? Um, uh, how do you measure your scope one to three? Should you be measuring your scope one to three emissions? How do you measure your scope one to three emissions? Um, all that sort of stuff. And then wading through you know, all the different consultancies that you could use, or should you go it alone? And it's just a huge amount of work. And I think it can be quite daunting um, and you know we're speaking as you know 15 of the probably some of the, the biggest tech companies you think about if you're if you're just setting up you know there's two of you and you know, I guess we're all working from home at the moment but there's sort of two of you in a coffee shop or, or whatever um, trying to get your business off the ground the last thing you're um, you're probably thinking about is your is your net zero plan so actually um, coming together and being able to create this um, this resource, you know, the toolkit that I mentioned and the website um, and, and having a, um, a place where you can really sort of um, simply and quickly work through all of this um, based on all of the work that everybody's been doing already. Um, I think that's, that's really invaluable. Um, it saves a huge amount of time and it means you can spend the time on the stuff that, that really matters rather than searching for, um, you know, consultancy somebody's already found, or, you know, somebody's already vetted and, and, and those bits of it. So I think um, I would say like the website has been, you know, that's, that's obviously one of the, um, the, the biggest outputs from from the task force and i think is, is a really really useful resource the toolkit is part of that um again it sort of walks you through what you need to do it helps you understand scope one to three emissions what's net zero versus carbon neutral all that kind of stuff so you're not reading conflicting things on the internet um and then it's that community as well so i think um having access to other companies going through the same um uh, the same issues and having the opportunity to talk to um to talk to them and share uh, best practices practice but also challenges and you know your struggles that you that you've seen along the way um, and I also think just having this identity as well you know being part of tech zero it's something like I said that um, the government recognizes and is really supportive of, of um, it's you know it, it'll be a, a forum for us to organize other events and opportunities to meet up hopefully one day in in real life and I think having um, having that support as well should be should be really valuable for people too brilliant and uh... I'm also keen to kind of touch on all of the companies that are involved so far, such a kind of um, enabled, engaged customer base. How important are the companies that you guys work with? Um, how, how important is tackling climate change to the customers and, and to investors? And has that changed at all over the past few years? I don't know if Catherine wanted to jump in on that one at all. Yeah, it's, it's very, very interesting because um, one of the things that we're noticing is um, when we go through uh, sort of, you know, RFPs, et cetera, to, you know, to be a payments provider to sort of businesses. Most are now really um, sort of asking about our sustainability, our ESG reporting, et cetera. Uh, and I think that is just going to continue to um, to be of real, real importance. And it's interesting because I know um, somebody's asked about incentives about uh, on the Q&A about becoming a net zero company. And I think, you know, regardless of any sort of paid or formal incentives, I think we're all going to be incentivized because I think increasingly, as businesses, either big or small, are going to start to have to really focus and report on their uh, carbon emissions and where they're getting to and what their own net zero targets are. It's going to be so they're going to want their suppliers uh, to be uh, also on that same agenda because otherwise you're, you're impacting their scope to be emissions. So I think that means there's going to be just a general incentive for us all to work to this collectively. Uh, and I think it becomes a lot less about kind of competition and much more about us trying to be do, change things that, you know, as, as a group, which is what's so great about about tech nations, but it's definitely been asked more, definitely been asked, um, you know, our board is definitely sort of said to us that, you know, we've got to make sure we're clearly addressing this because, you know, we've got quite big ambitions, uh, you know, should we ever consider going on the public markets, et cetera, that, you know, this will definitely be up there at the, at the forefront. So it's definitely cannot, you can't ignore it. Um, we've all got to sort of buy it and drive it. Completely, yeah. And um, Rachel, I don't know if you want to kind of touch on that. How how are what three words engaging their consumer base? What's the, what's the pattern of, of how people are kind of receiving this and whatnot. Absolutely. So um, our consumer base, 
we've already done done a bit of research into this and we think they're very engaged um on on this topic um you know we, we've seen from consumers that they will literally pick and choose between companies based on what they're doing in the ESG space. So um, it's definitely something that we want to talk to them about more. Um, just to go back to sort of uh, what Catherine said with regards to suppliers and also investors asking about this as well. So um, one of our major investors um, asked us to basically commit to being net zero by 2035 shortly after we made this pledge. Um, so it was nice to see that actually we, we beat that by, by five years. Um, and I think we'll expect to see more and more of that, both from investors, maybe new investors, but also suppliers that we're working with or people that want to engage us. We'll just It will just become the way to do business. You'll be forced to have to answer questions on ESG and sustainability. Um, so it's better to get ahead of the curve now. I think it, it comes from potential employees as well. You know, we get people Absolutely. asking, so we're a B Corp at Bulb and we get people asking about that throughout the recruitment process. You know, it's really important to people. Um, so it's really valuable for us in all sorts of ways, but, um, uh, and, and it's the right thing to do, but it's, I think it's also really, you know, it's appealing and it helps you, um, helps you get access to really good talent as well. Um, and I would just say like, we've, we've really noticed it from our, from our core business as well. So Bulb set up, um, just over five years ago now, and um, the renewable energy market was about five percent then. About five percent of UK households were um, were with renewable energy suppliers. It's over thirty percent now, and that's just in in five years. So we've seen a huge shift of you know people really voting with their feet there, and I think um, we'll see that we'll see that increase um, rapidly now over the the coming years as well. It's definitely you know it's something that people really want and people really care about. Brilliant. I'm just conscious of time. I want to leave time for the Q&A at the end. But Emma, I don't know if you want to kind of touch on how companies can get involved in Take Zero. Obviously, we have got this ambition of signing up a thousand companies by COP26. And I think the, the audience at home would definitely be keen to understand how they and, and other tech companies can go about joining yeah, and I would say it's really about helping a thousand companies, supporting a thousand companies as much as um, as much as them signing up. So I would say if you're starting to think about sustainability, if it's you know number fifty on your to-do list today, um, and you're thinking, I know it's something I need to do, right up to whether it's something that you're you know you're really prioritising. But again, you know you probably need a bit of support as we all do in um, in really getting it off the ground. Take a look at the website, um, search for uh, Tech Zero Task Force or go to Tech Nation's website, or I think the link is um, somewhere still in the, in the Q&A. So have a look at that. Um, it has access to all these resources um, that I've talked about and you can sign up and, um, and make your commitments there. So it's really easy, really straightforward way to, um, to get involved and, um, and we'll hopefully uh, clarify a lot of the, the confusion and um, help save you a lot of time as well. Fabulous. And I think I think that's so key is that this, you know, it is a kind of a support group in many ways. We're all going through this this journey together and we're all kind of at different stages of that by, by joining Tech Zero. Presumably, you know, there's a lot of support from with those companies within that and, and you can learn collectively as we kind of progress. So there's the incentives in that case are, are, are huge. Um, I just want one final question before we go to the Q&A that I want to kind of get everyone's view on. Just one piece of advice that you give tech company looking to start their net zero journey right now where should what's what's one thing you wish your company had done differently or, or is doing and, and thinks is important um who wants to go first i can i can go first on this one so i think um the the scariest thing is, and it's obviously such a cliche, but the scariest thing is is starting. And lots of companies we spoke to were really worried about the size of their emissions just because they didn't know what they were. Um, so for us, um, measuring our scope one to three emissions, just kind of ripping the plaster off and measuring the scope one to three emissions was such a big first step. It's not a huge project. It's not really expensive. Um, uh, it seems really scary, but as soon as you've done it, you know where you're starting from. And that's, I think that can be the biggest barrier um you don't you know you, you can't reduce what you can't measure so i think just doing that um that sort of fairly straightforward exercise and measuring your scope one to three emissions knowing where you're starting from um and and getting on and doing that would be my um my biggest piece of advice aside from signing up to the task force obviously obviously yeah <laughs> thank you uh, rachel 
Um, I would just say straight after obviously getting buy-in from from the top, which is necessary, I would say immediately look to to galvanise a, a cross-functional team because you absolutely can't do this as a team of one or two. Um, and it's the best way to engage the, the entire company. Fabulous. And Catherine, finally. So I think uh, it's kind of flowing on really from what Emma has said is uh, once you've done your measurement is then setting what is definitely an achievable target, but also ensure that you can keep measuring uh, your emissions so that you're able to uh, report progress. I mean, you know, obviously my background being finance, I, I know how important it is to ensure you only really sort of drive to change if you are constantly measuring that change and know you've set yourself reasonable targets that you can achieve. You know, there's no point sitting here and saying I'm going to be a uh, carbon, you know, I'm going to be net zero by 2025 if you've not got a plan to get there. Uh, and so I think the, the best thing to do is that, you know, you want to set something that you, you really feel comfortable in and then sort of do a step plan that, of actions that you know is going to get you there. And so you've got real clarity about how you're going to drive this change. Brilliant. Thank you so much, everyone.